Lusham Islamic Center is the heartbeat of the London Borough of Lusham. It primarily serves the Muslim community of Lusham, but also we serve the needs of our non-Muslim neighbors and community members. My name is Shaquille Beg. I'm Imam at Lusham Islamic Center. I have been the Imam here for over 21 years now. It's a very active community. Uh, so we, of course, we have the regular services that a mosque provides, the five daily prayers, the Friday prayer, the funeral prayer, the Eid prayers, and so on. But on top of that, there's a lot of activities for our youngsters, our sisters, and even the non-Muslim community. We have a supplementary school, which is known as the YMA, the Young Muslim Academy. The focus on the Young Muslim Academy is Quranic classes and Islamic studies classes. We have uh, a number of events and workshops that take place at Lusham Islamic Center, focusing on workshops such as dementia, uh, mental health, parenting. We've had a training session for Imams. We feel Imams need to be trained and equipped so they can serve the community members uh, in, in a better way. We've even had a training session on creative arts where a sister has come to the mosque, a very kind of like active sister. She's a acclaimed a poet, a spoken word artist, is Suhaima Mansur Khan, and she's done three or four workshops on spoken arts. So we feel all of these things are, let's say, part of the vision, and the comprehensive vision of Islam and Lushim Islamic Center as well. So you'll find a number of events take place at the center with you know, organizations, external organizations, external speakers coming to the center. We also have a mosque open day uh, where the non-Muslim community and neighbors are able to come to the mosque, have a discussion with the Imam about the mosque, about Islam and so on. We've had counseling sessions that we've done for non-Muslim family members. So we are a center for Muslims, but also a center for non-Muslims. Uh, they're looking into Islam, they have questions, queries about Islam, they have discussions with the Imams of the center and in most cases return and do become Muslims. If I was to put a figure since 2000 and now, the number of non-Muslims that, that have become Muslims at the center, I would say about 10,000. It's a lot, man, it's a lot. I mean, weekly, generally speaking, every week there is a shahada. Young, old, different ethnicities, different colors, different races, it's, it's beautiful. So we have a weekly class for new Muslims where we teach the basics of Islam, challenges, that Muslim youth are facing, or youth in general, are great. We provide a lot of services in terms of, let's say, mentoring, let's say, workshops on knife crime, youth violence, uh, youth club services, football, scouts, trips, dinners. One of our main, and you could say the largest activity uh, for our youth is the Friday football that we do. Around 40 youngsters attend. But football is secondary. What do we want to gain out of these youngsters coming to, together with us at the center? It's in terms of unity, in terms of brotherhood, in terms of positive vibes. So you'll find we'll have a reminder before we start the football session at the beginning, two, three minutes. We'll have a reminder at the end. So it becomes more of a mentoring scheme yeah, rather than just football itself. Uh, we feel at the center that a person's well-being is spiritual, physical, mental and emotional. So you'll find we stress a lot on the physical well-being of a person because we feel the physical well-being helps the spiritual well-being and also the kind of emotional and mental well-being. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, he said, Al-Mu'minul Qawi khayrun min al mu'min daif The strong believer is better than the weak believer. So strong physically, spiritually, emotionally, you know, all of this, those things are included. So as a, uh, at the angle of the physical side, for example, Wing Chun for brothers and sisters, kickboxing for sisters, football, you know, for, for brothers, uh, basketball for sisters, key fit for sisters, brothers and toddler group for sisters. The mosque is open for all, you know, men, women, and of course, as I mentioned before, non-Muslims. Uh, in terms of services specific for sisters, all of our services and activities are open both for men and women. We organize marriages here. Uh, if marriages are not working out and there's a problem between spouses, there's counseling services. Uh, if uh, there's a problem between, let's say, a parent and a child or parents and children, we offer kind of counseling services, conflict resolution and so on. Also extends our services towards, yes, say, let's say the non-Muslim community in terms of uh, who might be involved in gang. The mosque done a lot of work, a lot of work in terms of gang mediation yeah, in, in the past decade and so. 
we take part in uh, Feed the Homeless project. Uh, it takes place uh, in central London. And also last month we, and this month we will be distributing sleeping bags because of the winter period and we do that every winter also. The centre has also been very active in interfaith work. So we're part of Faith Leaders Network and a Faith Leaders Forum in the London Borough of Lusham, active members of, of, of that uh, faith group. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? Khairun nas and fawmlin nas. The best of people are those, the ones who are the most beneficial towards people. On Sunday, the 20th of October, uh, the Cadford Civic Suite, uh, the, the London Borough of Lusham, organized a, you could say, Salam Day, the Great Salam Day, the Great Peace Day in the London Borough of Lusham. It was organized by the council and led by the mayor of Lusham, Mayor Damien Egan, to show the appreciation to the center and the Muslim community of Lusham for the work that they have done in the London Borough of Lusham for many decades. Part of the reason that I thought it was so important that we have a day to celebrate the contribution of the Muslim community in Lusham, a day to celebrate the contribution of the Lusham Islamic Center, is, is it's important to have the event here to give it the official recognition that this event deserves. And I can certainly assure you that in my time that I'm there, we will certainly have this event every year as a recognition of our Muslim community. So thank you very much. Making sure that we come together as a community is the matter of our face style and what our background is, our ethnic background, or even what our, our lifestyle is as well. And so, special thanks to Shaquille for the name on this day, where we can celebrate our differences as well as the things that draw us together. And through encounters with each other, discover the roots of our own traditions, as well as those of other peoples. Thank you. You see, it's amazing when I look at where I am today. You see, this thing what I was raised amongst the called is the chosen way. I used to go into my church every Sunday. My mom was cooking rice and peas, listening to reggae. I was a typical bad boy, typical black household. I walk in my jeans slow, face like I own a road. Before there was no hope, I used to make a lot of dough. But when they asked me what's my purpose in this life, I said, I don't know. A few books, a few months, a lot of reading. A new season, it brings a new way of thinking. I reason when it's Muslim, he's speaking, I listen. I smile because of the beauty I found in this religion. Um, I just want to say it's an honor to be here because Two years ago, um, when I first started performing poetry, Imam Shakil invited me to do a show with my students to perform, and that was the first time that something like that ever happened. So I'll perform the poem that I performed then, and um, I'll perform another poem that is about Lucia Mosque because I love, I'm, I'm very honored to be part of this community. I'm not from Lucia, I'm not from London, but I live here now. So this will not be a Muslims are like us poem. I refuse to be respectable. Instead, love us when we're lazy. Love us more poor. Love us in our back-to-backs, council estates, depressed, unwashed, and weeping. Love us high as kites, unemployed, joyriding, time-wasting, failing at school. Love us filthy, without the right colour passports, without the right sounding English. Love us silent, unapologising, shopping in pound and skyping off school, homeless, unsure, sometimes violent. Love us when we aren't athletes, when we don't bake cakes. When we don't offer our homes or free taxi rides after the event, when we're wretched, suicidal, naked, and contributing nothing. Love us then, because if you need me to prove my humanity, I'm not the one that's not human. So, Islam is basically the refinement and perfection of the human soul. In so much as the human soul can be perfected, because the human soul can never be perfected. But it can reach levels of perfection that has been the message of the revelations from the time of Adam until the time of the final messenger of Muhammad So Islam is the refinement and perfection of the human soul. And if we look at the five pillars of Islam, these five pillars represent that perfection. You have the first, which is the testimony of faith, to bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except God alone, and Muhammad is his last and final messenger. A person may ask, how is it that this represents the perfection of the human soul? By attaching ourselves to one, we detach ourselves from everything else, and that includes the self. One of the catastrophes 
that we are often subjected to is the own self. If you look throughout human history, you'll find that the atrocities committed, the catastrophes which take place, the violence, the um, inflicted poverty, the subjugation of others, and all of the other types of um, perils that human uh, kind have faced often come from one source, the self. And so through God, we refine our souls and we attach our souls to God, which detach our souls from the self. 